Hi everybody, it's Paul Daniels here. It's another What I Fix Daily. Today I've got an Asus, uh, what is this, X556, I think it is. And it has come in, it will not boot because it will not power up. You can plug power into here, you'll see 19 volts coming up to the MOSFET array, the pair of them, and then nothing. No power button activity, no LED lights anywhere. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the board out and hopefully we'll be able to see what's going on on the other side perhaps. It could be something else entirely but it'd be nice to see what's going on on the other side because this hinge was pretty much half broken off and likewise this one here. So it's taken some sort of physical knock which would tend to make me want to look for a physical defect before I bother diving into the electronics. Unfortunately, it appears Asus has seen fit to make this a little more complicated to disassemble. I haven't seen him do this for a little while. This is a stacked setup whereby they put the daughter board on top of the main board. So if you want to get things out, you have to sort of rip out a lot more than you want. I find these a little bit frustrating for the fact that you have to go through all the extra steps and it's a more problematic to then do the testing when you're finished. It's not a lot of screws but it is enough to just make your day a little bit slower. It's also more parts to lose. Fortunately at least with the containers that I use it is a good way of keeping track of everything. It looks like I'm gonna have to lift the hinge off this one. This is the other problem. I'm, I'm not keen on when they force you to have to do this sort of heavy uh, shifting of things. On the one hand I'm somewhat hoping that maybe we're lucky and we'll just have a disconnected FPC or something. Okay, I guess we'll take the screen off. As you can tell, I have not improved the lighting in this workshop yet. It's all coming in the future. There we go. Well, that's quite cute. We've simply got a dome switch right there. Nothing else, no flex, nothing. Alright. We'll have a look at this under the microscope. And put this aside. So this is our switch assembly. Let's see if we've got any physical issues here. I mean the soldering is not great. It's like it, it's suffering. It's not too bad, I suppose, on close up. It's a little bit head and pillow style. Like there's no flow over the tops, but that's okay. I'm going to check the continuity of the switch when pressed. Good. Alright, so we should see this line here get pulled to ground when we press the switch. So we just get a little bit balancing act here. And now we try and press it. Yeah, so that's all good and fine. So I'm going to plug the power in and check a few voltages. Okay, let's see what we got. 19 volts, which is what we'd expect. Now we probably should see a couple of volts here. And we've got nothing, so we've got no power getting to the on-off switch to start with, so we've got to go back a little bit further. Should we, we normally should see something like 3 volts on here. Now the fact that we are getting voltage in the uh, jack still would indicate we don't have a short so we've got a problem with the power getting beyond here. Right, so that should be ground, and that's 
and 19 volts. And we should see 19 volts there. Yes. What about here? Nothing. All right. All right, we'll take the power out and see if we can get an idea of what that MOSFET's doing. So for that, we're going to switch over to diode mode. Let's see. Open circuit. Let's make sure we are. Yep, that's good. 0.491, that'll be the body diode. Zero. Zero. Well, we've got zero and zero there. I mean, I could sort of say, well, maybe that looks a little bit burnish there, like it's been cooked up a bit. But I'm not yet willing to put money on that. It is a little unusual that it is zero and zero. Okay. That's also rather low. But then sometimes uh, I think we feed into that. We want to, which makes sense because everything else is wrong. But what I have here is another board from a similar sort of laptop, similar spec. And we're just going to make a comparison here so that we can get some idea. So even if you don't have a schematic or anything like that, you can at least, if you've got another board of a similar type of computer, you can make a comparison. Alright, so what have we got? Point five two seven and open, which is more like what I would expect. And the other way around, direct conduction, and open. Okay, now, what about this one? This is the one that, on the other board, is 0 and 0. So there we go, so we've got 0 0.57. Open. 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 So things are very different on this one. So what we might do is take this MOSFET, which is... Uh, let's see if we can find out what the other one is. Alright, I can't find anything else that is a sufficiently similar setup. So I'm going to go ahead and take it off this particular board here which we originally used and hopefully it does the trick I'm going to put that aside somewhere safe, so if I need it again I can use it. I'm just going to put that into a little iPhone shield. Okay, you're going to prepare the area so that it's ready to go as soon as we get the old new one on.
Yeah, let's get our donor. Make sure we get our orientation right. Alright, so this is where it needs to go. A little cold on the the other side there. Whoops. That's better. Wait for it to flash back. There we go. Okay. Just give it a bit of a wash down while it's still hot. Uh, come on. Okay. Let's have a look at those readings and see how we are this time. That's good. It's open. That's where we want it. That's good. That's open. That's good. Reasonable voltage drop there. Excellent. That's far more like what it should have been. Not to say it's fixed, but uh, let's see now. So this does have fan, so we're gonna go back to the main view and try to do this. Now hopefully we will at the very least get some sort of light to indicate that we have AC input and hopefully not a big bang. Well, no big bang. Let's try the on-off button. If I can press it. Still nothing. Alright, let's see if we've got a voltage on that on-off switch. Uh, that's more like it. We've got 3.2 now. So we have made a step forward, but it seems like there's something else at play here. Now these do seem... these have integrated RAM. So I don't need to have a um, mem memory stick installed. I guess the question is, am I missing something? Well, let's put a USB stick in to see if we get a light up. It's very handy just having a USB stick like this. Get that. Well, we do have some sort of activity then. I saw that be start up. Didn't last very long. No, just there we go. Um, give it a few seconds. Maybe the fan will spin up. Uh, we still don't have a spin up. Normally it should by now, but it could be just simply running in a very. Um, it's waiting for the CPU to get to 40, uh, what am I talking about? It could just be waiting, well the CPU is getting hot there, so it's obviously doing something. Let's put it back in the chassis and have a look. It could well be that we're fixed. 
Now what I normally do is I will hook up something to the HDMI, but I don't have my little miniature screens on hand at the moment. Just little 7 or 10 inch portable screens can be very useful like that. Plug a USB stick in. Get our power. And attempt to turn on. I've got ants. Oh, we have a screen. Looks like we're good. So there we go. We were very lucky in this case. It was just that one input stage MOSFET from the DC jack. And occasionally we do see this fault, uh, particularly if you've had something like a um, smashed or cut or shorted power brick or something goes wrong with the power brick. Sometimes that can cause these input MOSFETs to decide to end their life. So thank you very much for watching. Uh, catch us all next time.